welcome to another edition of Thai Conversations with Aida Patikonafe. Thai simply means technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And today, we are going to be talking to Jonathan Sua, who happens to be the founder of Enoch Tech STEM Center. And they also happen to be partners of Robotic Education and Competition Foundation that happens to be based in the UK and USA. Enoch Tech STEM Center provide high quality experiences to students and teachers in underserved communities in the field of STEM through robotics education. Thank you so much, Jonathan Kennedy Sua, for joining us today. Thank you, Aida, for having me. Okay. It's, it's a pleasure to be on your <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the, the first question. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Jonathan Kennedy Sua? Okay, so Jonathan Kennedy Soa is a very young man from a very humble beginning. I went to Laboni Senior High School and I happened to be the founder of Inuf Tech STEM Center. Okay, so um, what do you do at um, Inuf Tech STEM Center? I, as, as the founder, I I manage all the affairs, okay. our outreach, funding for programs and stuff. So, I also teach as well. I do instruct. Okay. So, um, you spoke about funding. Is it getting partner funds or you use your own money to support the work? I use my own money to support. And then one of my, my major funder is my grandma. Okay, okay, that's excellent. So, what inspired this initiative? So, this initiative was inspired when I was in senior high school, in Laboni Senior High. Okay. I didn't, I got a program that I didn't want to do. So, mm -hmm. I had to do to 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 keep me in the school. Okay. Something that made me come to school. And then we started robotics. Oh, nice. So, so initially, um, what did you want to be? I wanted I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Oh. I, I, pure science with biology, and then we, our class was reshuffled. That, that was in our first year. So after the reshuffling, I got into a geography class, which oh. I had no plan of doing anything concerning geography. So okay. it's really it. Yeah, so, mm. Mm -hmm. so that's when you decided to start something with robotics at Laboni. Yes. It, it wasn't only robotics. When, when I didn't get biology to do and I was doing geography, I wanted to do IT. But when I went to speak to the, to the head, he, he, he said, he said he won't allow us to do the IT because we are we are only like a few number of us. So I went around to call people who would be interested so that we start, they give us a cur curriculum and then we start learning on our own. But they didn't. So we had to go around, get people. We recruited more students, genius, and, and then we started a club with IT because IT was bad. I was literally the, like the best IT student in the school and people didn't like IT. So we started a club. I would go on YouTube to get tutorials, we learn. Then we started doing for robotics competition. We went for some at Regent University and we won. We went some, we went on other competitions. We, we lost them. So it, it has been going on that, that okay. way. And I was like, so it, it's very expensive to study robotics. Like, it's very expensive. When there's a competition, they have this workshop that you would have to pay around 400 cities to join. A student, 400 cities to join. And I wasn't having that kind of money to do. But I, I wanted to do it because I like robots. I like how they move. I like controlling things, I like controlling things and like, so it, it was fun for me. 
but I didn't get a chance to go to this places so the only thing i had to do was to study on my own at and home decided to create the opportunity for people who couldn't have access to this through your club that is so i also started in of tech right there in the school and this is where we are now we, we it, it has been a very rough journey right We've done our best, we've tried our best, and we've met people who are also passionate about this project and they've helped us so like so well. Okay. Tell us about yeah. the Robotic Education and Competition Foundation and how you became partners with them. Okay, so I realized that a lot of people are doing Lego robotics in Ghana and it's all over. But Rec Foundation hosts the largest robotics competitions in the world. So I was like, hey, wow, how can I bring these people here? How can I partner with them? So I did my research and then got to their RSM, that's the regional sales manager, Paul McKnight. And then I got in contact with him. I talked to him and asked how I we will be able to partner and then he gave me the tips and things to do and i did and then eventually we became their certified partners in ghana awesome. so just so, recently mm -hmm. we just partnered recently so in the future we'll be having the largest robotics competitions in ghana awesome uh, so um and i'm looking forward to that and i'm looking forward to students coming from probably west africa to Ghana to participate in your event. Um, so what are some of the projects you work on as InnovTech STEM Center? InnovTech STEM Center is solely for the underserved communities. We want to give people, the people like me, when I was in school, I didn't get access to these things because they were expensive. So we are providing these quality experiences to people like me, people from poor backgrounds who if not grace wouldn't see things like this things like robots building robots and programming so we go to villages we go to like very underserved communities and then we introduce them to to this and the the feedback is is very fulfilling mm. it's very fulfilling i've seen yeah. some of the work and i think you're doing amazing and I'm glad that someone has the heart to take on this challenge of going to rural and underprivileged areas to teach them STEM skills. So, um, what are some of the challenges you have faced um, in this project? The challenge, the, the project. So, one, one challenge is funding. <laughs> funding, funding. Yes, we. I, I happen to have one one of the like the best team members in the world. Sometimes we fund it ourselves. Sometimes if we don't have, I have to fund it. If I don't have and they don't have, then my grandmother comes in to fund me. So <laughs> thank you, it, it, Oh my my god, my grandmother is one of like she's the pillar, <laughs> the pillar of this organization because she has been she has been helping us with funds. Sometimes you go on outreaches and then there's our money gets like we spend all our money and we would have to get more money. When I call, she's there to support. She's not rich, but she finds ways to get the money for us to support us. So, so uh, apart from funding, apart, from, funding, apart from funding, apart from funding, I think right now it's access. And um, I'm very glad that we, since we we've been training teachers for GS, we've been able to get access to the public schools because because the other organizations are mainly for profits, like the mm -hmm. charging. Yeah. So it's it's hard to to so get the teachers the are teaching them for free. Yes, for the public schools they are not free. free yes it's yeah. for free 
because yes. we I mean, they can contact you oh definitely definitely all right yeah so, we are hoping to get sponsors on board to sponsor this because you know the components the parts they are expensive yeah. so we need people who will be able to secure for, for, for us we are there for the training we are there for the we do the training. We, we are very skilled and experienced with VEX, with Lego, with Arduino. And we, we are in the country as well. So, okay. yeah. So, what have you learned so far from this um, social impact journey? I've, I've learned. Okay. So, I've, I've learned that you can't go far without people. Mm. People are, are like the main the main deal. So I I met one amazing woman who has been a very like she has been a blessing to me, apart from my grandmother. So uh, she's Mrs. Olivia Opari, the director for the science education unit of GS. Okay. So she 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 supports like she has been helping us our recent projects the girl parade project she helped us with some of the kids that they have there she gave us access the school we went to post like she did everything for us like she didn't sleep always checking up on us how is it going and it was quite unfortunate that she wasn't around when we were having the program but in our next program she, she will be around and we'll be glad to also be there for her. Awesome. I'm glad you have a lot of support from the Ghana Education Service. So what are your plans for the future? You've been in this so, for more than five years now or approximately five years. So what are your plans for the future? So for, for now we are mobile. We are mobile and then I get a lot of calls from teachers and students like please we want to come to your center <laughs> you want to come to your center you want to come and learn you want we want to be trained we want to do this we want to do that and it's it's very sad that we don't have a space now because we've been all the time so in the future we will we'll look at getting a very spacious place and have all the amazing technologies there so when you want to build anything, just come there, like a maker space. You just come there, fix things and stuff, and then we we'll also partner with these corporate entities so that when there's a product, you see how we can bring that product to the market. Okay. All because right. our, st our students create amazing stuff, and you'll be, you'll be surprised when you see some amazing That's stuff. Good. I've seen some from, from a distance, I've seen some of your work and um oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> in terms of numbers, um how many people would you say you've impacted over the years? Since twenty fifteen we we've been able to impact over eight thousand students. Awesome. Awesome. About eight thousand What about teachers? We, for teachers they are around two thousand. Wow. Yes. That's impressive. We also started working with the GS. We've been able to train a lot of teachers and counting. Sometimes it's virtual, sometimes it's and we are moving. So that's one of the things. Okay. Yeah. So, what advice do you have for someone who's watching you right now, who knows you from afar, who knows you personally, but then admires you and, and maybe wants to be like you or wants to learn from you? What, what advice do you have for anybody watching? The, the starts now mm. start whatever you want to do whatever you want to do like just start now because if i had, i started with one kit one kit like that like this one kit and then it it was given to me by a friend and it's watchy like it has been so helpful to me he gave it to me to just use it and i started working with it so we started with one kit, and now and now we have a lot of kits mm. Dif with different kits. We have like we have it, we have a general, we have M bots as well. So 
start now, when, when you start, the energy you start with will draw people close to you, will mm. draw the right. And when you start, you also have to know that everything is about people. So if you don't treat people right, you are dead. <laughs> you like. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you. You said we should start now. Whatever it is that you want to do, we should start now. And that the energy we start with will draw people to us. And that we should remember that people are valuable. And that in this journey, you have to treat them right. Because you need them along the way, right? Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure, absolute pleasure listening to you, listening to all the things that you've done. And then you work with GES, with teachers and young people in underserved communities. And I'm glad that I had you on set today. So to everyone watching, this has been Thai Conversations with Ida Fadikonate. See you next time. Bye.